Hi, I'm Wouter from Triply, and this is part 3 of my Sparkle tutorial. Last time we performed our first very simple Sparkle select query, and today we'll look into more interesting queries. We'll actually generalize the query that we performed last time to what is commonly called the triple pattern queries. Now, let's start out by taking a look at the query that we performed last time, because we'll be building on top of that uh, query in this episode. Uh, the query looked like this. Uh, remember, this top part is called the projection, specifying the columns that will be re returned. And uh, the bottom part is called the modifier, and that applies some modifications on the rows in the tabular result. We'll now be looking into this middle part. So this middle part is called the pattern, and that is specifying which triples are returned from the knowledge graph. Now the term triple arises out of the fact that these are three terms, and these are commonly referred to as the subject term, the predicate term, and the object term. So this is already a triple pattern. But this triple pattern only consists of three variables. But Sparkle also has other kinds of terms. So Sparkle has variable terms, but also has non-variable, or what's more commonly called ground terms. And it actually has three different types of ground terms that we'll look into later as well. Now, starting out, uh, based on the query that we wrote last time. I have this query prepared and as you can see it's in some case to some extent it's actually very similar to the previous query because it has a variable in the subject position and it also has a variable in the object position although I'm using more descriptive names which I'll look at later as well. But the main difference is that now in the predicate position so in the middle term I'm actually not using a variable, but I'm using what's called a ground term, more specifically an IRI. And an IRI is a ground term that denotes a unique address on the internet. You probably recognize this from web browsers, where you also have a similar notation for locations of web pages. Now, this ground term starts with an angular bracket and also ends with an angular bracket. And that's the Sparkle syntax for absolute IRIs. So if you write down a complete web location inside your Sparkle query, you must uh, start it with an angular opening bracket and end it with a closing angular bracket. Now, what does this query do? So if you take a look at this predicate term, what it does, it's going to guarantee you that triples that are now coming from the knowledge graph are not just arbitrary triples, but are specifically those triples whose arc, so whose predicate, whose connecting term, is identical to the color property that is denoted by this web address. So what you will get is things that have a color and colors. And because we are using an example data set here containing a Pokemon, we will be retrieving Pokemon and their colors. Now let's run this query also to see how the result set looks like. And then what we see in the table is that we have two columns corresponding to the two variables that we had included in our projection. And here you can also see the benefit of using descriptive names because those descriptive names that you use for the variables inside your query will also be used in your result set. That makes it also easier to later interpret the table. Then when we look at the individual results, so remember each row in the table corresponds to one Sparkle result, you can see that for Pokemon we have bindings that are IRIs and we can recognize that they are IRIs because they also start with this angular bracket and they also end with this angular bracket. And we also have colors under the color column, but those look a little bit different because they don't start with an angular bracket and they also don't end with an angular bracket. And that's because these are a different type of ground term. These are the second ground term type in Sparkle called literals. Okay, so far so good. Now I have a third and final query prepared for today where we will be replacing yet one more variable with a ground term and there we will be filling in another literal. So let's take a look at that. I basically copied the previous query over here but now instead of the color variable I want to give a specific ground color. So a specific ground term that identifies a specific color. My intention is to retrieve various Pokemons that have exactly that color. So literal notation starts with double quote in Sparkle. And then let's see, there's only one thing 
one literal that starts with the Y character, and that's the word yellow. So let's try that out. If we run this query, what I hope to retrieve now is bindings to the variable Pokemon that have as their color property the specific color called yellow. There's one last thing that I forgot, and that's if we look at the projection now, you can see that the projection still contains two variables. It still contains the Pokemon variable and also the color variable. But the color variable is no longer to be found in my pattern. So let's actually remove also the color variable from the projection. So now I'm only returning the variable that I can actually bind in my triple pattern. Let's run that query. Let's take a look. So what the query now returns is a result set in tabular format, of course, consisting of exactly one column corresponding to the fact that I have only one variable in my projection called Pokemon. And hopefully these are now all Pokemons that are actually yellow. Let's take a look. So the reason why in linked data you use these lengthy web addresses in order to identify things is because it makes it easy to look up things. So if I click on something in linked data, I can always retrieve a description of the thing. So clicking on this Pokemon indeed returns a Pokemon that looks quite yellow. And uh, let's take a look at maybe this one. Yeah, this one is definitely also yellow. Okay, so what you can see is that in these triple pattern queries, you can exactly specify which triples you want to retrieve from the knowledge graph. It allows you great flexibility. You can choose between using either three variables or using a variable, a ground term and a variable, or variable, ground term, ground term, or indeed all ground terms. Then you get more or less a yes or no answer back. Uh, so in this episode, we generalized a lot of the things that we did in the previous episode. You can now write arbitrary triple pattern queries. Join me in the next episode because there we will be looking at adding additional bindings. Not only bindings that are coming from the knowledge graph, but bindings that you might introduce yourself. There are several reasons why you would like to do that. So let's do that next time.